barefoot through a minefield, you know? You're going to step on them every now and then. It happens. But when I set out to make this whiskey, I said, you know, America needs its own blend. America needs its own thing to drink. I said, we should put together a whiskey that's 100% made in America, not just the juice, but the glass, the cork, the label, and we should give back to the men and women who make it possible for guys who have high school diplomas and grew up in trailers in Texas to go out there and chase down the American dream. And that would be the United States military who's fought and kept the dream alive. For all of us, all these generations, a big hell yeah to our military tonight, one, two, three. I say this all the time, and it's what this brand stands for. And I think it's a lot of the reason as to why it's doing well like it is and that's this very simple thought that America does not guarantee you happiness America guarantees you the right to pursue happiness the right to go after it right that's what we're guaranteed that's right that's right meatloaf meatloaf is in the bar And I would do anything for love. Take it. Never lie to you, and that's a fact. Bang, bang. Meatloaf is at the Redneck Riviera right now, guys. My God in heaven. As I sat out on this venture, as, as our buddy Dave Ramsey would tell you, uh, Dave is also in the house tonight, financial peace. He will tell you about entrepreneurism. It, it is a harrowing experience. And you need strong people around you and people that believe in what you're doing to stick with you when it gets nasty. And that's exactly what I've had the fortune of finding is great friends, great people that back up the idea of work hard, play hard, Redneck Riviera, the spirit of America got an incredible team. They're in this room tonight. We were able to, we started off in one spot, and this is, this is pretty much the story of every entrepreneur. You start off here, and you start moving this way. When you put a little success on it, stuff can get crazy, right? Well, it got crazy with us, too, and I was able, through my friend Dave, meeting a gentleman at his house one night based in the great state of Kentucky that said, hey, we got this little brand called Angels Envy that did pretty well. What if you brought Redneck Riviera to Kentucky and we work with you on it? I said, sound like a good idea to me. Well, nine months later, I see the first bottles of Redneck Riviera whiskey rolling off the line just outside of Louisville in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. We are now in whiskey country delivering this American nectar all throughout the United States, now 47 states. Can I get you on proud of that? That's a lot. That's a lot of states. And the one guy that was able to do this transition and keep it together, and I mean, without him, it literally would not have happened because I was ready to say, hey, take two of these and call me in the morning. Like I was, I was at that point. But I meet who I now consider to be the whiskey wizard. That's what I call him, the whiskey wizard. The man behind the curtain. He's not, a, he's not all about the public speaking, but you have to come up because you've overseen some of the most successful brands in the past 20 some odd years in the whiskey world. You've overseen them. You're partners with Wes. You guys brought what you know to my situation, and now here we stand tonight experiencing a lot of success. I want to bring him up to the stage here. This is Kevin Sachs, the whiskey wizard. Come on up, Kevin. Come on up, sir. I get two mics. Oh, you got your own I mic. Have my choice. See, I have my choice. he thought you might be scared of that mic. Guy. He didn't realize I kissed him right on the mouth when we got over here. So, no, go ahead. Tell him. Tell Is this him. This one working? This one's working. Tell it. Tell him your thoughts on the brand, man, and where we're at right my now. My thoughts on the brand. So. This is great when Kentucky gets to meet Tennessee. This is pretty cool, right? Um, this brand is now in the heartland of America where it belongs. And so this partnership is so exciting. Um, John called our group about 10 months ago and said, I've got a problem. I go, John, what's your problem? He goes, we're selling 40,000 cases and we need a new partner. I went like, John, that's not a problem. 
Like, where, where can we sign up? And I said, what kind of team do you have behind me? He says, I got these three sales guys we can bring with us. This guy named Robert, a guy named Jared is sitting in Nashville, and Paul is up in Chicago, and I go, they're coming with you? They're coming with us, and he said, absolutely. And I go, we're, we're on board. So we couldn't be more thrilled. This thing, as John has said, is like get on board the rocket ship because we're taking off. And so we, we couldn't be more pleased, John, and we're thrilled to be part of this partnership. Absolutely. Thank you. Kevin Sachs. We support the Folds of Honor with every single bottle that we sell, okay? You ask yourself, if you don't know what Folds of Honor is, I'll tell you what they do. They put kids through college who lost a parent in combat. Can you think of a stronger way to say thank you for your service than to look after kids who lost a mom or a dad fighting for our right to pursue happiness? I could not think of a stronger way to say thank you. Yeah, we say thank you in the airport, at the restaurant, at the mall. You see a man or a woman, you go, thank you for your service. This is making it a real situation for them. Redneck Riviera Whiskey has now funded 115 college grants for kids who lost a parent in combat. I'm pretty proud of that. We're going to look up here soon. We're going to be in the thousands. We're going to be in the thousands. That's the goal. You give back to the people who made it possible in the first place. Right? Doesn't that make you feel good? I mean, the whiskey's good already, but you know it's given back. And, you know, some people say a portion of the proceeds of this goes to X, Y, Z. That's not what we say. We don't say a portion of the proceeds. What the hell does that even mean? What portion? Now, we believe in tithe. We believe in tithing. My dad's an old school preacher. Started preaching at 19 years old. I got my first five, $5 back in Texas hoeing the weeds out of a tomato patch. And he said, John, don't forget to tithe. I said, what's tithe, Daddy? He said, that's Malachi 3.10. It's the longest verse in the Bible. It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have enough room to receive it. Now, what that means is if you tithe, whether you're rich in the middle or broke, if you tithe, he says he will return it to you in such multitude that you're going to have to build a bigger barn to handle all the hay that you're going to be cutting. But you got to do it. You got to do it consistently and make it count. That's what we've done with this brand. This brand is built on principles like that. And everyone now that's working with this company, from our investors like Jason Rebrook, Mr. Steve Wordsworth, Elaine, all of our North Carolina friends and Texas friends, that's how we operate. That's what we believe in. That's what we want our kids to see us doing as they grow up and go. That's how Daddy did it. That's how Mama did it. Because that's how God said to do it, right? That's how we go at it. I think that's a lot of the reason why the brand is doing well. And people ask me, what's your daddy think, your preacher daddy think, about his son having a whiskey brand. Well, I asked him that question. I said, Dad, what do you think about me having a whiskey brand? Now, granted, this is after he heard Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. He was thrilled with that one. Oh, that's just a great... When the church youth group is singing Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy, he's like, are you sure you should have written that? I, don't... I said, Dad, what do you think about me having this whiskey brand? He said, well, Jesus didn't turn the water into Dr. Pepper. Can I get a yeehaw? And his second question, are you tithing? Are you tithing on it? I said, yes, sir, folds of honor. What's that? And I told him he went right on. Do it. So we're proud of this brand, and there's new things coming out. You see these two things uh, sitting up here? It's called Howdy Do. Y'all say, Howdy Do. I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah? It really kind of it goes back to the hee-haw era when people are still having fun and not taking themselves too seriously people too serious these days. Come on. Let's have some fun, especially if you're going to crack a can. So what Howdy Do is, it is an 8% malt beverage in four different flavors that we've been working on now for about half a year. 
And Wes put his touch on it, and it is incredible. We're going to launch it here in about six weeks. It's going to be starting to move across the United States. It also, of course, gives back to the Folds of Honor. And then one thing down here that you see that's not whiskey, it's barbecue sauce. Jules, can you hand me that real quick? That's Redneck Riviera 1776 barbecue sauce. Why is it 1776? Because every bite tastes like freedom. Of course it does. Partnered up with a great American family-owned business right here, Mr. Tim Engel from Red Gold Tomatoes out of Indiana. You guys ever walk in the grocery store and see Red Gold Tomatoes? You've all seen that for decades. Great family, and every ingredient in here is sourced from the United States of America, and there is no high fructose corn syrup, ladies. That was a big deal to my wife. It's real sugar, real everything. And on the back, you see that Folds of Honor piece. Meatloaf would like to put some barbecue sauce on his Don't mention my name. Uh, The reason that John Rich is standing up here tonight is because John Rich works his ass off, and he is a dedicated human being. So when he says to you, salute the servicemen, he fucking means it. He can cuss if he wants to. He's an international rock star. Thank you, Tim Engel and Red Gold for the 1776. I think we just passed the 2000 store mark on this and move it up. God bless you. We're going to play some music tonight. Uh, We're going to celebrate this. Listen, America's been through a grinder. I do think that, you know, in this bar, our best selling t shirt says, if you kneel for the national anthem, dot, 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 you're in the wrong damn bar. That's what it says. We can't even print those shirts as fast as people want them. We love our country. Is our country perfect? No. Is it the best country that ever existed? Hell yes, it's the best country that ever existed. We got to fight for it. We got to stop being enemies just because we disagree with each other. We should be able to have a cocktail and pull out the big green egg and throw some 1776 on them ribs and sit down and remember what we have in common, which is God, family, and hard work. Can I get a yeehaw one last time for that? I'm going to invite up uh, my main guys, TJ McDaniel. One thing, TJ, come up here because I got to acknowledge TJ. This is TJ McDaniel out of Fayetteville, Arkansas area. He's a good old hillbilly. And what that product there, Howdy Do, guess who decided to name it Howdy Do? Who came up with that name? T. TJ named it Howdy Do because he's a hee haw fan and he dips snuff every afternoon at 4 p.m. like a clock. I've seen him do it, right? 3 p.m., 3 to 5. Three to five. This guy's been right next to me now going on eight years working with this brand and is the right-hand man on everything we do from this bar to the whiskey to the sauce to the boots to everything else. TJ, anything you'd like to say about the brand? Just keep in mind you're speaking to Dave Ramsey and Meatloaf amongst others. Come on, buddy. A round of applause for TJ at Resident Hill, Billy. Uh, Thanks, everybody. It's been a ton of fun. The brand has been, it's been, it's been the greatest thing I've ever worked on. And the reason why is because of, of this guy. And I'll leave you with this. It's often said the speed of the group is determined by the speed of the leader. And John has set the pace on everything. It's made this team move. It's made this brand grow. And, John, we're grateful for you. Thanks for fighting. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. it. Yeah. All right. I'd like to invite up uh, Jarrett Catalani, Robert Manfredonia, our general's out in the field, and TJ, and I think, Jules, you want to get a few pictures, right? Some various folks. Uh, do you have like a, is like a family picture, or how do you want to do it? Move the mics off the stage. And then here in a couple of minutes, we're going to play you a little country music. Y'all ha- get a cocktail, take care of our staff tonight. We got the best staff in town. A shout out to Kim Tyler in the back of the room. Best manager on Broadway right there. God bless you, Kim.
God bless country music. God bless country music. We on? Yeah, we're on. One last person I'd like to say thank you to is Jules Wortman, who's been my publicist since 2003. Where's Jules? Where's Jules at? Hi, Jules. Jules put this thing on. She's been lockstep with me all the way back when Warner Brothers had me in indentured servitude back in a contract. Thank you, Jules. You can bring, bring acoustic down. This is terrible. That's good. We got any Johnny Cash fans out there? I say hi. Well, love is a burning thing, and it makes fiery rain. Well, bound by wild desire, I fell into a ring of fire. Y'all sing it. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher, and it burns, 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 ring of fire. Ring of fire. Y'all seen the trumpet part? Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Well, the taste of love is sweet when hearts like ours meet. Well, I feel for you like a child. Oh, and the fire went wild. Y'all sing it to me. I fell into. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. Bring a fire, bring a fire. Play the guitar to the fire. Y'all help me sing it. went down and it burns, burns, burns a ring of fire a ring of fire yes and it burns, burns, burns a ring of fire a ring of fire y'all sing the trumpet part da 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 come on da 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 Last time, Redneck with you. Give yourself a hand, y'all sound good tonight. God bless Johnny Cash. How about a hand for my band up here? This is the Big and Rich Boys, man. They, they've had a hell of a year. These guys feels good to play again, don't it, boys? God, do you even remember how the hell to do this? It's like... We're used to doing about 100 shows a year, and I think in 2020 we did three. Three? Two? Maybe two or three. I don't know. Best musicians in Nashville right here. I saw Taryn Papa was here, too. Uh, she is a killer. You saw her on The Voice, I think, yeah. Paul Szymanski, where are you at, Paul? Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Szymanski, uh, who is out of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, been with us since day one when we were out in uh, the capital city of Antifa, Portland, Oregon, back when we were there. We had to rescue this brand from that town. I mean, there are good people in Portland. There are. They just won't go into Portland. But Paul, you're like a, you're like a living version of a Saturday Night Live skit with Chris Farley. It's like the greatest... 
And this is what we do on the bus out on the road. Would you like to see what we do to entertain ourselves on the road with Paul Szymanski? Paul, come on up, Paul. Everybody say, come on up, Paul. Come on up, Paul Szymanski. Paul Szymanski. Come on up here, Polly. Southside, Southside Polly. Paul, you know what I want you to do. You just got to just rattle off the thing. Say, you know, teacher doesn't answer. Yeah. Uh, Johnny's, Go ahead, now get, it, get on the mic so they can hear you. Johnny's going to come up here and sing a couple two tree songs. And uh, I'll go to Bears. <laughs> hey, Paul. Hey, Polly, how many heart attacks does that make for you there, Paul? Uh, this is number 15. I'm going to have 16 tomorrow, but I'm going to wait a couple two, three days. <laughs> you guys have a great evening, everybody. All right? And uh, this is uh, uh, John Rich, everybody. Hey, have a great evening. There you go. It's funnier when you're drunk, so uh, continue drinking. A rowdy song for the girls goes like this. Well, I got a little change in my pocket. Go and take a lane, a lane. On the line, on the telephone, honey. I'll give you a ring. But it's time I talk. I get the same old thing. Always no huggy, no kiss. Till I get a wedding ring. My honey, my baby. Don't put my love upon no shelf. She said, don't have me no lines. And keep your hands to yourself. The band needs a shot at Granny Rich Reserve right now. Matter of fact, I think the whole bar needs a shot of Granny Rich Reserve right now. Can we make that happen? Let's start with the band. Yes? Can we talk about Granny Rich for a minute? Yeah? You guys are standing back in the corner. That, that, that's the Granny Rich corner right there. Yep. She made those clothes that you're... Vanna Whiting right now. She made those clothes for me back in uh, the Lone Star days, back in the 90s. And then that, that little chandelier hung over Granny's dining room table for about 35 years. That's where we ate all the fried chicken. And then below that is when we brought Granny down and down here to the bar about a year or so ago and uh, unveiled Granny Rich Reserve Whiskey. And she was wearing a, a crown and had a sash that said Queen of the Working Class. That's Hanlon back there, too. You see that? And then a bottle of Granny Rich Reserve and a picture of me and Granny drinking whiskey off her sewing machine in Ashland City, Tennessee. Go check that corner out before you leave here. So, yeah. Here's the thing about Granny. 
Granny Rich lived through the Dust Bowl days, World War II, the Great Depression, lived through all that, had cancer twice, and in her late 80s was still running her own business as a seamstress because she was incredible. I mean, she's a badass with a sewing machine. Running her own business by herself, lived by herself, drove herself. She'd work 40 hours a week, get home, turn on Wheel of Fortune, smoke some Marlboro Reds, drink a little whiskey, kick her feet up, go to bed, get up and do what? Go back to work. And when you ask Granny Rich, Granny, why are you still working 40 hours a week in your 80s? Her answer is, because I can, and that's what you're supposed to do when you live in this country. <sighs> and she looked at you like, if you ask me that again, I'm going to poke your eyeball out of your head. You're talking about the greatest generation. There's a reason they call them that, right? You know, in her day, the young people were worried about Hitler and Imperial Japan and all kinds of things. And today, a lot of our young people, not all of them, but a lot of them are worried about uh, not getting enough likes on Instagram. Or somebody said something bad about them on Twitter. We weren't built on the shoulders of people who cared about what somebody says about them on Twitter. We were built on the shoulders of people who fought Hitler and Imperial Japan and worked into their late 80s and drank whiskey and smoked cigarettes and said, if you don't like it, kiss my country ass. That was my Granny Rich, and that's why we have that corner for her. I'll make a toast to Granny right now. Hold your drinks high in the air, no matter what you're drinking. Hold it up. Here's to the spirit of America. Here's to it coming back alive and well, and I believe it will. And here's to the memory of Granny Rich, and her memory lives on tonight in this very room and in my heart. On the count of three, give me a God bless America. One, two, three. God bless America. Drink it down, Patriots. Drink it down. I'm going to sing you a song that's uh, never been a hit. I have lots of those. But this song uh, is about my granddaddy, Papa Rich, from the world, uh, world War II, Greatest Generation. Lied about his age, told the, uh, told the guy at the local office that he was 18 when he was 17. Glasgow, Kentucky is where he's born and raised, not far from where we're making this fine redneck Riviera whiskey today. Lied about his age because he said, I can run, I can jump, I can shoot, send me in, let me go. And so they did. And by the time World War II was over, the man had six purple hearts. He was five foot two, 115 pounds soaking wet. And they made him into what they call a tunnel rat. A tunnel rat in the Pacific was somebody that would go into a cave and his job was to flush the Japanese out the other side of the cave. That was his job. Nasty job. He loved doing it. Got six purple hearts, hooked on morphine for two years when he came home, then became a farmer. God bless him. I wrote this song about him six months after he died. He never got to hear it. I hope he hears it tonight. Dedicate this to all of our veterans, all of our active duty military personnel. This is called The Man. I'll play it by myself, right? was one of the millions who signed up to defend us long ago in 1941 when they sucker punched us in Pearl Harbor he fought under MacArthur 17 with an army Thompson gun well he stormed a lot of beaches Slept in jungles with the leeches He saw things a young man should never see And when they shot him in the shoulder He got back up, he marched forward Left a lot of brothers dead in Kawajalain And if it wasn't for the good Lord and the man There wouldn't be a breath of freedom in this land I see people on my TV taking shots.
God's at Uncle Sam. I hope they always remember why they can. Because we'd all be speaking German or living under the flag of Japan if it wasn't for the good Lord and the man. If it wasn't for the good Lord and the man. Can I get a hell yeah? I'm the grandson of a soldier And I'd fight the whole world over If duty called and freedom's on the line But thanks to the greatest generation And the ones still fighting for our nation I've never had to kill for my way of life And if it wasn't for the good Lord and the man There wouldn't the freedom in this land And I see people on my TV Taking shots at Uncle Sam I hope they always remember Why they can Because we'd all be speaking German Or living under the flag of Japan If it wasn't for the good Lord and the man if it wasn't for the good Lord and the man He was one of the millions Who signed up to defend us Long ago in 1941 and When they sucker punched us in Pearl Harbor He fought under MacArthur 17 with an army Thompson gun Thank you I'd like to call up my good friend Who's already made an appearance I was trying to keep it a secret But it's just not his style This guy ain't no singer This guy's an artist you know what the difference between an artist and a singer is? A singer can sing anything, but an artist only does what the artist does. It's called art. It's non-redundant. It doesn't exist anywhere else except with that artist. That's what the meaning of the word means. And there's very few real artists in the world anymore. Just so happens this fella and I met on Celebrity Apprentice with Donald Trump. It was fantastic. Good people. John Rich, Donald J. Trump, yes, that's where we met, right there at the table. It's nice to know that the president is currently down hitting golf balls in Florida and feeling great and eating hamburgers and whatever he's doing, right? I like to know. He deserves some time off, right? You know he's having a blast watching Biden try to give a press conference. That was, Wow. It's totally unbelievable. It's incredible, really incredible. Anyway, I digress. I met this fella on the set of that show, and I got to really know his heart when I had to pry him off of Gary Busey when they were fighting over their finger paints on national television. He recorded a record that still holds the record as the best-selling rock album of all time time bat out of hell ladies and gentlemen a new nashville native resident the one and only meatloaf come on up meat yeah it's your turn buddy <laughs> no come on up here i ain't gonna tell you what to do here I have to explain something. I have not sang in five years because of four back surgeries. I canceled a major tour, I missed five films, and um, I don't know what else, a lot. But anyway, I'm looking for Taryn. Where's Taryn? Come up here. Taryn, come up. Hey, brother, I got a cord under your... You do? You need it? 
You don't need that cord. Hello. What the hell are you talking about? All right, Taryn, come here, Taryn. All right, I don't know if you know Taryn. She's a Nashville native. Oh. She just was on... The Voice. The Voice, thank you. Wow. <laughs> and she finished 10th. She was on Blake's team. And give her a big hand. Listen, that is not an easy thing to do. Now, John wants me to sing Johnny Be Good. No. Oh, you don't? I want you to sing. And I would do anything for love. Oh, I'd run right into hell. I can't sing it. I'd run I, I believe in you. And back. No. Meatloaf, you could sing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and this place is going to go ape shit crazy, huh? I would do anything for love. I'd run right into hell and back. Oh, I would do anything for love. I'll never lie to you and not so back. That's it. <laughs> I, that, I, I can't believe I even did that that much. Unbelievable. So anyway, that's right. We are friends, and that's the only reason I'm fucking up here. Um, but John said to me, will you sing? I said, okay, well, I'll do Johnny Me Good. And he just took me into singing bad anything for love. But that's the way it goes. So, John, I think we're in the key of C. Wait a minute, hang on. Good? Key of C. And Tara's gonna sing with me. <laughs> yes, sir. Aren't you dear? Yes, I am. Here we go. You gotta fucking turn up, man. <laughs>
Meatloaf at the Redneck Riviera, y'all. Stop it. Hang on. I will come out there and kick your ass. You don't sing. You understand? Meat I ain't loaf. fucking around. Meatloaf. All right, John, get him started. One, two, three, four, go. Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Yeah, now you're on. Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Sing it to me. Go, Johnny, go, go. You're back on me, one, two, three, four, go! Rock me home. Say go. Go, Johnny, go, go, 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 go. Johnny, be good. Meatloaf. 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 It's what's for dinner. My back is fucking killing me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands up for one of the greatest of all time in any genre ever. Meatloaf in his back is fucking killing him. So. Hey, you want some crazy shit? You got it. What's so good, right? Jules Wortman is losing her damn mind. Look at you sucking down a two drink. Why do you have a mask around your chin? I can't understand you with a mask over your face. Hey, why in March Madness are they wearing, wearing the mask on the sideline but not on the court when they're all masked up? I'm sorry, logic. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. My buddy Jason Rebrook is here, uh, a fellow Texan. Grew up in West Virginia. Lean and mean, his pop, it was your dad, right? Agent died from Agent Orange because he fought in Vietnam. Raised by his grandparents, come from a hard spot, worked really hard, built himself one hell of a situation down in Texas, and is now a lead investor on Redneck Riviera Whiskey. And we're so proud to have him, man. What a story you've got. One thing we have in common, though, beyond all that, is we both love John Anderson. We love John Anderson, right? So, we love songs like, uh, uh, Don't ask her on a straight tequila night. She'll start thinking about him. Then she's ready to fight. Flames are broken hard on every man's side. On a straight tequila night. Right? We love all those songs. You and I, you know. Blow, blow, 
Seminole wind Blow like you're never gonna blow again I'm calling to you like a long lost friend But I know who you are Right? Every, we know every John Anderson song ever. So if we're going to play the quintessential John Anderson song, it's got to be this one. I'll send this out to my buddy Jason Reebrook. Oh, hot dog! Hold on, me. Well, now there's a little girl in our neighborhood. Her name is Charlotte Johnson and she's really looking good. I had to go and see her, so I called her on the phone. Walked over to her house and this was going on. Her brother was on the sofa eating chocolate pie. Mama was in the kitchen cutting chicken up to fry. Daddy was in the backyard rolling up a garden house. I was on the porch with Charlotte Bean and loved them to my toes. We were swinging. Sing it! Yes, <laughs> uh, I just kissed Meatloaf, baby. I'm the man. Out here on the front porch in the swing. Just the swing. Welcome to the Redneck Riviera, what America really looks like, baby. And I saw that she's a darling, she's the apple of my eye. When I'm on the swing with her, it makes me almost high. And Charlotte is my lover, has been since her spring. I just can't believe it started on her front porch in the swing. Just a swing. Uh, just a swing. Yeah. Yeah, now little Charlotte, she's as pretty as angels when they I'm out here on her front porch in the swing, just a swinging to the five. Well, now little Sean and she, they're pretty as angels when they sing. I can't believe I'm out here on her front porch in the swing, just a swinging. But just a swinging. Here we go, son. I always told Granny Rich I love the taste of meatloaf, but that brings it to a whole new level for me right there, I'll be honest with you. Wow. Anybody else want to kiss meatloaf? I think he's in the mood. Do you like that, Jason? God, I got to tune this to guitar. You know what? I'm not going to go to drop D. I'm going to go back up because standing to my left right here is the hillbilly extraordinaire himself from the great state of North Carolina, Mr. Steve Wordsworth. Y'all say hi, Mr. Steve. He's like, oh, God, what's going to happen? Mr. Steve, come to Nashville a handful of years ago, come up to my house, and he said, what is it you're trying to do with Redneck Riviera? I said, man, I just want to celebrate the people that work hard in this country. I want to give them a patriotic experience, give them a bar, give them a whiskey, something that they feel aligned with, something they feel proud to go there, proud to drink it, proud to eat it, wear it, whatever. And Steve said, well, I'd like to help you do that. So this building that you're sitting in right now was built in 1852. It's old. Mr. Steve and Doug and Andy, I know Andy's out here too. These boys from North Carolina and Bryce, all these incredible patriots said, you know what, let's buy up a couple of them old buildings down on Broadway and let's turn it into the Redneck Riviera. The reason we have this bar tonight, this gentleman right here, his family and his friends. Put your hands together for some foresight that they had, some belief in it. Thank you, Mr. Steve. 
get that ring out there. So I can't finish until I sing a straight up North Carolina song. Huh? Send it out to your wife, Miss Elaine. Miss Elaine, how do you generally like to shoot a white tailed deer? What do you use to shoot it with? A six point what? A, on steroids. Basically, is that an AR 10? It's basically a souped up AR 10. Wait a second. They say they're going to take our guns because you don't need them to hunt with, but you're hunting with an AR 10? What would you do if they showed up at your house in North Carolina and said, I'm going to need your deer rifle? You're going to make them do the hat dance. Oh, yes. <laughs> A song about North Carolina and from a guy that I had the pleasure of getting to know. I can't even believe I get to say I was friends with this man while he was on this earth. The greatest country singer that ever lived, Mr. George Jones. Go like that. Well, in North Carolina, way back in the hills, me and my old pappy and he had him to steal. He blew out lightning till the sun went down. He filled him a jug and he passed it around. Mighty, mighty pleasing. Well, the city seeker came and he said, I'm tough. He said, I want to taste that powerful stuff. He took one to slug and he took it on down. I heard him moaning as he hit the ground. Mighty, mighty pleasing, and got his horn squeezing. Whew, what a lot of the team and team and revenue is too. Searching for a place where he made his brew. They was looking, trying to book him, but my pappy kept on looking. Ooh, what a lot now. And that guitar song. To the floor. Do. I took a little slug and right away I knew Had my eyes bugged out and my face turned blue Mine just started crashing, mine just started flashing Whoo, what a lot of the team and team and revenue is too Searching for a place where he made his brew They was looking, trying to book him, but my pappy kept on booking Whoo, what a lot of they were looking, trying to book him, but my pappy kept on booking White Lightning. North Carolina in the house. North Kakalecki. I'd like to ask one more of my friends to come up because he's the reason that I got to meet Kevin and Wes and the boys in Kentucky. And he ain't short on words. He makes his living out of talking. And This guy went bankrupt a couple of times early on in his life. Rebuilt it. And what he learned from that, he's told tens of millions of people how to pull themselves out of debt, how to have a bright future. And he does it all based on the word of God on top of everything else and become one of my good friends over the past 10 or 12 years. I have him to thank tonight for this relationship that happened. Can we welcome Cousin Dave Ramsey to the stage? Come on, Cousin Dave. God bless you, sir. Oh, Dave Ramsey. Oh, yeah. There's a reason I'm in talk radio, John. Aren't you proud of this guy? We've been friends a long time. I'm so proud of you. So proud of the man you are, how hard you work, how smart you are, how you love this country, and how you continue to prove that the free enterprise system absolutely works. Took this brand and... With a couple of sales guys sitting beside you, you guys have worked your tail ends off. Meatloaf is exactly right. He has worked his butt off. I've watched him do it. We're good friends. We smoke cigars together all the time and hang out. I'll brag about that. I'll name drop a little. But uh, he's absolutely incredible. And um, when we were pleasured to be in New York the night he won uh, Celebrity Apprentice, 
it was a lot of fun backstage to watch all of those uh, wannabes that, um, well, they were a little jealous of us rednecks. So we were, we were a little proud of our hillbilly buddy down here, man. So Texas, Tennessee, and Kentucky gets together. Good things happen. Always has, always will. And Redneck, Redneck Riviera is no exception. It's incredible whiskey. But this guy is a force of freaking nature. And he's a walking jukebox, too. Pretty incredible. And honors all the people that he sings their songs and has continued to do that. What an incredible man. John Rich, ladies and gentlemen. Love you, Dave. Thank you. Let's do one more and let these people get to drinking, huh? Now we'll detune. Now we'll detune. Hey, hang on. Did the band ever get a shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did? Yeah. You guys are good? All right. Here's the dumbest country song ever written, ladies and gentlemen. Feel free to break your neck while you dance to it. up rednecks about her evaluation of my cowboy reputation had me begging for salvation all night long Hell, I took her out digging town introduced her to my old bird dog singer of regression Wilson song I could think of we made love and I sound up my old and I ride into the city I make a lot of noise cause the girls they all so busy Studly Roy and the girls say, Sail a horse, ride a cowboy. Everybody say, Sail a horse, ride a cowboy. What? What? Sail a horse, ride a cowboy. Last time, everybody sing it. Sail a horse, ride a cowboy. God bless y'all. Welcome to the Redneck Riviera. Thank you to all my friends, all my supporters. Let's go make America. Drink some Redneck Riviera whiskey again. Give me a hell yeah. Come on now. God bless y'all. A hand from my band tonight. I'd like to leave you with one little thing. I'm going to step off, but I'd like for you guys to play me a little Stevie Ray Vaughan song, just instrumental style, yeah? I'll see you at the bar. God bless y'all. Thank you.
Can I make a request? Can I? I don't know what's going to happen next. Give it up for this young lady, one of the best voices to walk through this town in a very long time. Have fun, darling. God bless y'all. What's up, y'all? Make some noise for John Rich!